What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live Label Free. As always, bringing incredible guests from all over the world. So sit back, relax, and tune in. My next guest is a proud single father of two, a successful entrepreneur, credit repair specialist, motivational speaker, a certified divorce coach, and founder of Awakening Coaching. Please welcome Marcin Lepchinski. Marcin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Diane, for having me. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Should we tell them that we know each other and you're here actually local in Chicago? Absolutely. Why not? So Marcin is somebody I've met through the networking crew here in, mm. or the networking scene in Chicago. Unfortunately, we did not get to meet face to face, but we see each other plenty. So, um, But he's a very dynamic individual. He's overcome some stuff and he's doing some great work. I want to talk about you being, um, we'll talk, share your story. You you were originally from Poland. You came here to America. Give us a little bit of background. Uh, yeah, thank you. for. Uh, so I was born in Poland, uh, raised in a village. So it was a very uh, tough, challenging life, you know, going to school and helping uh, my parents out in the field. You know, my dad was into construction. Uh, my mom was the accountant. She was also a secretary and she used to work in the uh, factory. She would make shoes. Okay. And... Uh, uh, my dad's parents were here in the U.S. and they sponsored, you know, my dad. So that's how um, we were able to come to the United States. But before all that happened, you know, one day my mom came up to me and said that, you know what, hey, we'll be moving to United States. And then at the age of 12, you're living in Poland. I never heard about United States, you know, like, hey, what is this big country about? Yeah. So can you can you imagine, you know, both of your parents, you know, in, in their late 40s just pack up, you know, all of their life in, in five suitcases, pack their three kids and just move to this country, you know, go overseas yeah. and uh, not having any uh, experience or, or the knowledge of English seconds when you're just speaking Polish language. So yeah. when we got here to the United States, you know, especially in the beginning, a uh, good thing that, you know, we had our aunt here where we can live at her home because you know yeah. in the beginning my mom and my dad they did not have any work or anything and for them to find a job was very very difficult yeah. but uh my uncle was here so he took my dad and he was working into construction and my mom found a, a job at the uh manufacturing plant when she was a uh, mechanical assembler so the whole life here in the united states uh to the the, the time the period to acclimate it was very challenging because yeah. you know what especially going to school i went uh to elementary school we did not have any car or anything. So all that shopping, all the grocery bags, we had to carry for around two miles, you know, whether it's summertime, wintertime. So it was really difficult, you know, until, you know, my parents could have saved some money and we can buy a vehicle. So as my life, as my journey started here, I started, you know, learning uh, the second English uh, language with a teacher on the side where she would pull us on the side and we would learn at least two, three hours a day. Uh, because it was tough, right? It's like, and you imagine yourself traveling to China and not speaking their language at all. I've gone to Japan. Okay. So I've been there and it is challenging. Like, it's kind of scary. It's very scary because you don't know what anything means. You can't talk to people. It's, it is challenging. So I can't even imagine what that would be like as, as a kid, as pre, a preteen, preteen too. Yeah, it, 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 it was, it was a challenge, but you know what? We were able to overcome, especially being a young child you know 12 13 years old then you know we picked up the uh english second language very quickly and then as i grew i went to high school i went to college got my degree uh i always loved electronics i love troubleshooting uh printed circuit boards uh okay. troubleshooting testing so you know uh so you know anything that broke any appliance that broke around the house like washer the dryer or the refrigerator i was able to fix it with our colleague and technician very cool that's awesome all right, let's fast forward. So I, I love immigrants. My husband is an immigrant. His parents came over here when he was seven. And you, there's just something so different about the work ethic. You know, we have people here in the U.S. that were born here that have all the resources that they can and they and they don't do anything with it. But you have people that come over here from other countries and they work so hard to create a beautiful life for themselves. And I just have so much respect. So anyways, OK, you are a motivational speaker and certified divorce coach and founder of awakening coaching i want to know more about why a divorce coach you know oh uh, well thank you for the compliment you know absolutely you know well if you look at the immigrants from all the other countries that come to here and they're they're performing really 
physical labor, right? You yeah. see all the landscapers, you see all the construction bricklayers, and not only all the work that they do, and and they do, you know, pretty much all the worst jobs that some of the people would not want to do, and so on. But you know, that's why you know I I appreciate them. I give them a lot of credit. You know, like especially my dad. You know, can you imagine in summertime being a bricklayer? You know, no. always in this heat, sitting on this, standing on a wall, and it's it's very very uh physical labor that take 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 takes a lot of toll on your body. You know, wear and tear and so on. So that's why they retire when they're a little bit younger. But Fast forwarding, you know, how did I become a, a divorce coach? So where did my journey start? It basically started where uh, I met my first girlfriend. My first girlfriend became my first wife. Yes. And uh, you know what? Uh, we were dating for around three years. Uh, we were living in my parents' house. And you know how it is in, in, in the Polish community, Polish society, you know, our culture, our beliefs that, you know what? Hey, no sex before marriage, all those different yeah. things. And then, hey, you guys, you know what? Got to get married and so on. So we did get married. I was 21. She was 20. Okay. We got married. Uh, at a young. Pretty young age. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, but you know what? Uh, we got a good careers, uh, good, good education. Uh, when we uh, graduated from schools, then later on, we bought our first home together. And uh, we had a very good life, you know what, as, as, as a couple, as a married couple, we yeah. traveled, you know, we went to different cruises. And we actually enjoyed life prior to, you know, ar arrival of our son, Aiden, you know, which right now he's 12. And then later on, you know, our daughter, Victoria, showed up four years afterwards. So that that life, you know what, it was it was a beautiful life. It wasn't easy, you know, thank God, you know, that, that we had my parents here that they were able to help us, you know, yeah. with uh, raising the children. So we were able to both uh, work together and as as you know with family what what is happening especially when you're growing the family when children do comes and for us for couples you know for married couples for the husband and wife what is happening is we give all the attention all the energy to our children right to our children to you know to work around the house work outside the house and you know over a certain period of time we start to shift we start to grow apart and we don't do things as what we used to like travel together go out on dates movie nights dinner nights all those different things and then uh during that period of time what happens we do change right because we're not the same as we used to be when we met right so yeah. that that started happen happening and then it got to the point where it, it's just that that spark you know that flame that we have in between us it kind of was gone that the intimacy was gone and then you know what if is as as you know if the woman or the man if it's they're not getting the attention at home they will seek it on the outside of the house so that's what little bit of happened and it got to the point where you know what we decided to hey let's take some time apart so you know we did that i uh i moved down to my parents house for three weeks it was over christmas time new year's time oh wow i i had my children with me my and my daughter was uh three years old my son was six so after those three weeks uh you know it was sunday evening around 5 p.m i was driving home and i was just so quiet because you know what i did not know what to expect you know because i haven't talked to my uh wife during those three weeks at all you know because we just took time apart we didn't yeah. talk so when we got home, you know, I, I, I parked in the garage, closed the garage doors, and then we had the garage connected with our home. So I opened up the doors and, you know, I got in the house and it was pitch black. There was no one home. So, you know, I turned on the lights, you know, kids ran in. They turned on all the lights in the kitchen, yeah. in their rooms, because you know what? I miss sleeping in my bed. Kids yeah. miss, miss sleeping in their beds. You know, they miss their toys and, and, and all that. Sure. And then half an hour after... Uh, my wife came in and she was out grocery shopping. So, you know, I greeted her. I took the grocery bags and put them on the, uh, on the kitchen countertop. Yeah. And we started talking, you know, I, I, I said, hello, how is it going? All those different things, because I haven't talked to her for three weeks. And at that moment, you know, I, I knew that something is not right. Yeah. I knew that, you know what? She could not even look at me. She did not even answer. She was always looking like downward. She didn't look, you look, look me in the eyes. Or anything and then it got to the point where i said you know what hey i'm moving back home and uh she says no you're not i'm like what do you mean you know what hey 
I pay mortgage, I pay right. bills. You know, we said that, hey, after three weeks, this and then, and she's like, nope, you cannot move back in. <gasps> so you know what? We did not get into fights. We did not get into arguments or anything, but it got to the point where uh, she called the police. Oh boy. Uh, sheriff came over and they listened to her story. They listened to my story. And uh, she said that she's not feeling safe around me. And you when I like that kind of guy either, like you seem very like even keeled. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, I never. I'm, I'm not that type of a guy where I initiate into any physical sure. or verbal or anything. None of this. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't put my hands on a woman because I wasn't raised like that. You know, right. uh, by my friends or anything. You know, I I just you know what? I am a grown man, adult, mature adult where. I just don't believe in those things. So what happened is basically the police officer said, hey, one of you has to leave. So you know what? I decided to leave because I had my luggage that I haven't even unpacked yet. Yeah. And Deanne, I'm telling you that I have a, such a vivid uh, image in my mind. It was in a kitchen. So basically I, I, I was kneeling down on my both knees and yeah. my daughter, three-year-old daughter came over. You know, she gave me this big hug and was crying, daddy, don't leave, daddy, don't leave. Yeah. Then my six-year-old son, so what was happening, because, you know, police was at the house, so they didn't know what was happening. And then he, he ran over as well to the kitchen, you know, he gave me another hug. So both kids were just, you know, hanging on my shoulders, both of them crying, holding me, squeezing me, daddy, don't leave, daddy, don't leave. Yeah. So at that moment, it, it just, I, I, I felt like my chest, my back muscles, my whole body just got so tense. Like I couldn't even breathe. Like I was there physically, but mentally I just left. Yeah. And felt my, my back felt like, you know, your best friend just stabbed you with a kitchen knife in your back. Yeah. And you cannot move. You cannot even uh, 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 just do anything. Like you're in shock. You're in disbelief. You, you have tears just going down your eyes. Like, what is happening? Like, what, 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 what did this come down to? Yeah. And then later on, you know, uh, my wife came over. She's grabbing and pulling the kids out and says, your dad's got to leave, your father's got to leave, and so on. And you know what? Like, that was the worst moment in my life. It, it felt like I felt like a stranger, you know, the home, the family that I have built. Yeah. I was not welcome in my own home. Yeah, that's true. And I was 35 years the and I had I had no place to go. Yeah. I had no place to go except my parents' house. Wow. So once I left, I, all, all, all my way, I just cried. I, I yeah. just, I was just, I, I couldn't stop. I was in such a shock and such a disbelief. And you know what? At that moment, I, I made a decision that I am done. This is over. I'm fighting for divorce because I cannot live like this. You know what? Yeah. It, it, it's just, and that's where I made the decision. Wow. That's that's t intense. I don't even know how I would feel about that. Did you guys ever? I mean, was it a? Did you was your divorce like peaceful or was it rough? So it was amicable, right? But what I will what uh, what I will share is, especially for me, I was the first one in my family ever to get divorced, right? So I did not know anyone. I was ashamed. I was afraid. I was in shock. I was in this bis disbelief. So I didn't know what I am getting myself into. Yeah. Didn't know, right? So what did I do first? What do we do, right? What are other individuals doing that are going through the I went to look and search for a divorce attorney. So I did that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I went to one, to other one, to the third one, because it's it costs a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, uh, this one lady uh, asked me, uh, hey, did she file? And I'm like, I don't know. So she went to the computer, she checked. And she's like, she did not file, but I had some bad news for you. I'm like, what is it? Well, she put an order of protection against you. And, Holy crap. and, I'm, and I'm like, what is it? I didn't even know what that was, you know, because I got, I never got into trouble with the law. Yeah. So she's like, for 21 days, you cannot call your kids, right? You cannot text them. You cannot go by the school, email them, none of that stuff. You cannot go by the house. But I'm like, I need my clothes for work. So she's like, well, you're going to have to call a police escort, you know, to get your clothes. And it, it, I, I, that was another step in the bag. I, I didn't know, like, what the heck is what's going on. I right. was just falling apart. Like, my whole world, everything dealing now, I have a, you know, a restraining order against me. Like, what is going on, 
right? Yeah, that's crazy. For no, for it nothing, was, for nothing, it, right? For, from nothing, from nothing. You know what? But later on, the end, when I saw their report, it was just like I was this monster that I I, I did all those different things which, which I never never done. You know what? And I it, it was it was insane. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot. I mean, usually there's, you know, you two are, you're going at it, you're fighting and, you know, you're getting, things are getting crazy. That makes sense. But it doesn't sound like any of that happened at all. So, so you know what? So then what happened is, you know, when I went onto the third attorney, he took my case and he said, Hey, the first thing that what we got to do is remove that uh, restraining order yeah. against you. Right. So we went to court and you know what we, you know, she did not even look at me or anything. So here you go two two individuals right that have built such a beautiful family had everything yeah now are standing on this battlefield and destroying each other emotionally and financially yeah so right. our attorneys came to terms that okay here we'll remove the uh restraining order so that was good right then you know what now the process you know especially for us men because you know what I was walking around like zombie. I was I was numb because I had to work because now I got to pay child support. I got to pay child care. I have to pay my own bills. You know, I, I had to move into my parents' house because I could not afford mortgage. I could not af afford rent. None of that stuff. I was living paycheck to paycheck like many single deaths out there. That's what they're doing, working two, three jobs, just trying to survive. Wow. And you know what? It, 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 it's... I would say first several months was the worst stage for me because, you know, I had suicidal thoughts and only thing that really saved me in the end was uh, my daughter's voice when she said, daddy, don't leave, daddy, don't leave. And then, you know what, I, I told myself, you know what, how would she feel? How would I feel if my daughter cried herself to sleep every night because her daddy's not there for her? Yeah. So that's that's what really saved me. That's beautiful. Thank you. It, it, it's 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 hard. Like it, like what I went through. It was it was really hard, right? So you're so emotionally overwhelmed. You're going through so much stress. You're going through so much anxiety, where you don't know even what to do. Because I was so angry at myself, at God, at the whole world, at everyone around me. Like, why did this happen to me? Right? We had it all. We did, right? And now I hit the rock bottom. I lost my family. I lost my children. I lost myself. I lost my self identity. I didn't know who I was. I didn't even know how to function in this society. I was just broken into pieces. And you know what? I'm like, I cannot continue living this life because I was. we were living up here yeah. and now I'm down here. Right. So I was just angry because I wanted to be living this lifestyle, but I kept doing the same thing over and over and I wanted different results. And I was just getting so frustrated because I didn't know how to just jump out of this loop that I was in, like this hamster in this wheel. And I was doing the same thing over and over. And I'm like, dude, that is insanity. You got to change something. You got to do something. So I ask myself, you know, how I got through this journey is I started with a self-help books. Okay. Then one book that I highly recommend to everyone that really helped me was The Power Is Within You by Lewis Hayes. Okay. I started okay. reading about that book and because I had a lot of hatred, I had a lot of resentment, I had a lot of anger, jealousy, you know, towards my ex. You know, I couldn't stand her. You know, I had stomach nuts every time I would drop off my children, pick yeah. them up. And you know what? It was just emotionally at the end, I was self-destructing. Yeah. I was living in this penitentiary prison because of this negative self-talk, blaming myself, how bad of a father I was, how bad of a husband I was, all these nasty things that I was just you know, right. um, going through. Yeah. And then, you know what? I'm like, I have to do something. I cannot live like this. So what I did actually is in 2021, I asked myself, you know what, what do I got to do, right? To just get better, change my life. And on Facebook, I found uh, Les Brown. He's one of the motivational speakers. And he had this program called the Power Voice. And I entered that program, you know, because I just wanted to learn because I was very shy. I was not, I didn't have no self-confidence. I was very introvert. You know, I wouldn't go out with people because I was just, I had no courage to even to speak to no one because I was just really down on myself. I would have never guessed that about you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how I was even prior we met. And uh, through that program, you know what? It was a three-month program. I have learned about, you know, the power of the storytelling. 
because I thought that I was the only man in the whole world going through a divorce. Uh -huh. And when I heard other people's stories, journeys, what they went through and how are they able to overcome, like, my goodness, that gave me so much inspiration, so much courage that were, you know what, I'm like, wow, well, I got to go out there. I got to share my story, you know, what I was going through. And through Mr. Les Brown, I met a uh, mindset coach Yeah, that, uh, you know, really helped me transform my life. But you know what, before I agreed to work, you know, coach with him is when I did my consultation with one of his assistants, then it was six month program and it was a couple thousand dollars. And basically wow. all the savings that I had, that's what the program caused. Wow. And I was very afraid, you know, like fear, limiting beliefs were just stopping me because I'm like, never in my life, I've spent that much money on someone to really coach me. Yeah. But I told myself that if I want a different life, right, whatever they're promising me, then you got to do it. So I did it. I, I basically said, you know what? I'm all in. I'm going to bet on myself. Yeah. I'll do everything that I can in my life. And oh my goodness, that was one of many best decisions that I have done for myself. Because you know what? That coach, he extracted those gifts, that talents, that potential that I did not even know that I had within me, you know, remove wow. those limiting bullies, remove that fear, help me set up my goals. You know what? Show me the purpose help me develop a routine, help me rebuild my self-identity, the person that I am today. And you know what, the end, not to brag about it, but in four years, you know, since my divorce, you know, became a certified divorce code, right? Became a motivational speaker. I became a co-author of a Amazon number one bookseller. It, it, it's just showing you guys the possibility, you know, what we have within us. If right. you invest in yourself, my goodness, you know what? It was just complete 180 degree shift in my life. That's amazing. I love it. Why should a man going through a divorce get a divorce coach? Uh, so why do you need a divorce coach? Yeah. Because you do not have the tools to help yourself. So as a divorce coach, you know, I am your thinking partner. I am your sounding board. What we do, I help men and women pre, during, and after divorce. You know, I help you make the best decisions because what is happening, we are so emotionally overwhelmed. We are so stressed where if you make decisions based on your emotions, it's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. It will. And you know what? When you can really sit down with somebody that has been through in your shoes, right? That have experienced it, that have did all the work, that have invested in themselves, then you know what? It's so much easier to... Uh, work with someone that has already been there, right? It, it's like hire, going to another country and hiring a guide. You know what? Instead of, you know what, for you taking a whole month to visit one country and see it, you can do it in two weeks, right? To see the whole country. So it's a very similar concept. And what I do, how I help, you know what, through, I have a really big support team of divorce attorneys, financial advisors, therapists, realtors, stylists, motivational speakers, uh, nutritionists, personal trainers, whoever you need, right, to save you that time, you know, take off from work. Hey, which attorney should I hire? Which sure. therapist, which financial advice? Because you know what? You're investing in your life because divorce impacts your whole life. It, yeah. it You don't even know how how bad, you know, it, it impacts it, right? And now you're all by yourself. For example, you know, in, in my family, she used to take care of all the bills, everything. Now I have to figure out on my own figure out the budget, you know, my expenses, what is my income, what are, what are some of my expenses? There's just so much that you got to figure out, you know, even that preparation stage, right? With all the assets, there's an affidavit that there's just so many pages of, of financials that you got to fill out, right? Now, the negotiations during uh, that divorce process, you know, I see so many individuals are acting as teenagers, fighting, arguing over things that sometimes they don't even matter, right? Right. And it's 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 your attorneys are charging. They're just charging going at They don't it. care. They love it when you get mad and get want to fight because they make more money. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so that's that's where we sit down, that what we think and, and and we look at things from a different perspective because what we do when we go through divorces, we are very narrow focus. We just focus at the now. Yeah. And then what I help you is hey, what would that one year, three year, five year from now look like you will you will be making totally different decisions. And now, hey, the life after, where do I even begin? Right? How do I heal? 
How do I forgive? And love. How do I self love? How do I rebuild? What do I want to do next? So I'm telling you, overall, Diane, can you imagine doing it all by yourself? No, I've never been through a divorce and I don't plan on ever doing that. So I, I love it. Where can people find you, connect with you, and learn more about working with you? So first thing is, I will start with my website. You can go to www.coachmarcin.com. Uh, social media lives, Facebook, uh, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Type in my first and last name and you can connect me through there. Excellent. You guys, I'm going to put those links in the show notes. So if you connected with Marcin and you need some, or you know someone that could use him as a coach, uh, go ahead and follow him on social. Go check out his website, link in with him on LinkedIn and send him a message. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. Marcin, this is the part of the show where I like to ask for last words of wisdom or advice. What would you like to leave with us today? Uh, you know what? I, w- I would tell uh, that man, that woman that is listening to our uh, listening or watching this uh, podcast is that, you know what? I love you. Uh, I care about you. You are not alone. I am here for you. You know what? Uh, we'll, we'll get through this. You and I will get through this. I will help you get through it because it's so much easier working with someone, guiding you. And you know what? This will be a painless process. You won't have to stress yourself out. You won't have to pull your hair out or anything. You know what? I have it all laid out for you step by step. And you know what? It's going to be very easy. You're gonna. Uh, it's not going to take as much toll on your health because you know what? Your, your health will get deteriorated if you're just going to stress yourself out, if you're going to overwhelm yourself with this process. So why not? I am here for you. You know what? I went through it all. I have invested and lots in, in coaching and program coachings that I have been through. And it's just easier. And I want to help you because you know what? I have, you know what, dedicated my life, you know, to help our divorce society, especially men and women that are going through uh, trauma because you know what? Divorces are compared to a traumatic event, to like a, a death of a loved one. And I care about you and I will help you. I really do because I really do care about you. And then I appreciate you all. So thank you. Whoa, I love that. That was beautiful. Thank you, Marcin, so much for sharing your story. Thank you for the work that you do because I feel it is very necessary because divorce is a label that people will carry with them. Like you said, you felt very ashamed. And I think that it's great that you are helping people get through it. So thank you very much for all that you do. You're very welcome. And thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it, you know, to, to sharing my story with other men and women that need to hear it. Yes, you're welcome. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Radulescu with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. As always, don't forget to subscribe, follow, rate, review, comment, share, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.